Right, so this is going to be our first swing and answer video then. So we've got Tiger Woods, obviously, as our first guy. Who else would you have? Who else would it be? We've got Tiger Woods then, who's won 82 official PGA Tour events. He has uh, 15 majors to his name. Woods is the only player to have won all four professional major championships in a row, which is pretty incredible. And that was in from 2000 to 2001. It's the only yep. thing I wish that I was slightly older to really appreciate what was going on there and appreciate yeah. the build-up throughout that year. That's it would have been definitely. amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, and this feat now has been known as the Tiger Slam. And Woods has also set the all-time PGA Tour record for the most cuts ever made which is 142. And nobody's going to get close to how many weeks he was at world number one. No. I think, I think there was a stat out there the other day, something like DJ has to be world number one till 2035 or something like that to equal the same weeks. I mean, that's mental, isn't it? Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Like, imagine being the top of your sport for that period of time. Equally, the thing that's always impressed me with Tiger is being able to do it so much under pressure. Like, yeah. imagine the hype around you going to bed after winning your third major in a row, knowing yeah. that when that fourth major comes up, you've got to make sure that you play. Imagine, imagine being that good as well with undergoing six swing changes, arguably. Like, big swing changes as well. Not just, not just a refinement here and there, right? And that's what I'm going to go on to talk about really quick, is um, I got this little case study here that I, uh, I coined off of uh, Scott Cox, who's a very good PGA pro in Canada, does a lot of certified courses online, and he's, he's very, very insightful with this type of stuff. So the swing changes we got for Tiger, we got 97 Tiger, which was Butch. We yep. got 2002 Tiger, which was Butch 2.0. Okay, you've got Haney in 08, you've got Foley in 13, you've got Como in 15, and then you've got working on himself 2019 onwards, Tiger. Okay, now... Out of those swings, okay, he was scoring average, apart from Como and uh, himself, where he hasn't really been playing a lot to get his scoring average and such. Butch, 97, second in scoring average. Butch, 2.0, first scoring average. Haney, first scoring average. Foley, second scoring average, okay? Now, Foley come under a lot of criticism for what he'd done with Tiger, okay? But... Those few years he was with Tiger, they've done amazing things. He won a huge amount, second in scoring average, greens in reg, 67.6%. Accu driving accuracy was second worst, only the worst being to Como, which was only 55.8. Now, I think you can attribute a lot of that down to injury because um, he wasn't in the very good state then with Como. However, he might have only had 55.8 accuracy with Como, but he was averaging his longest at 300.2. 300 okay. So he was hitting it longer, but more wayward. Now he was hitting it at 298 in 2002 average. So mm -hmm. if he was using that swing with today's modern technology, maybe that was probably the longest. And yeah. arguably between Butch and Butch 2.0 was when he was at peak Tiger, obviously, when you talk about those four slams. So interesting little thing. Um, interesting little stats here that when he was under Butch 2.0, he was way up in greens and red. And that's kind of what everyone attributes Tiger down to is his ability of his irons. And he was hitting 75.2% of greens. And the closest to that was modern day Tiger at 70 and Butch, original Butch at 70.4. So there's a lot, obviously, that you can attribute to Tiger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so from that, I've got obviously Tiger swing up now, yeah. modern day. I'm not going to go back old school. We're going to go new Tiger. Yeah. He's the GOAT. Yeah. Just won, recently won the Masters. You know, nobody thought he'd win again. I'm a massive believer in Tiger. Probably one of the biggest fans. Whenever he was in his slump, I always said he'd win again. Easy to say it. Go back through my Twitter. You'll find something in 2014 and he's in there. You've got to understand what this man does and what this man does well is a lot. Okay, he does a lot well. So you've got at setup, Tiger's very neutral. His balance points are all in check. He's got what you would say is a perfect grip. Um, his right hand, you've got the V obviously through his forearm and everything's kind of in check with his grip. So he's got a slight flex in his spine, in his shoulders, in his hips, in his knees. 
as normal with a lot of setups. But if you if you have a look at his balance points, they are very much so in check. Okay, yeah. so you can see here that his his uh, armpits over his knees, over his balls of his feet, or over his shoelaces. So mm -hmm. as soon as you get a player that's out of those balance points, you're going to struggle. Um, because the player, when somebody says they early extend and that's their fault, it's probably not. It's something that they've done wrong earlier on. It's right. the root cause that's making them early extend. Okay, Tiger doesn't do this. This is just a little bit of kind of coaching knowledge here for you that he he gets a lot of stuff right, obviously. It's, it's easy to say, and he does get a lot of stuff right. Okay, so after those balance points, and you've got those balance points in check, to P2, and P2 is when the lead when the club is parallel to the ground in the takeaway, okay, simply, okay? Now, at P2, his right shoulder stays higher than his left, okay? So which is showing that he's creating a tilt to his shoulders and his right forearm's on top of his left forearm, okay? Which makes that face what people would historically say is shut, yeah. but is not, it actually matches exactly where his spine angle is at, okay? So, so his spine angle there matches exactly where that club face is. Now, once he's done that, Tiger, he, he can everything's kind of dialed in. He doesn't have to do a lot of manipulation to the face later on. Quick tip for you guys out there as well. If you're one of these people that have always been taught to get the toe up in the takeaway, don't listen, please. Let's dial the face in a little bit sooner. Um, right, so from here... So, so, so from P2 to kind of P4, P4 is a top of your backswing, okay? Um, you can see that his hips flex and his pelvis starts to kind of clear out and he gains a little bit of, he gains a little bit of depth to that right hip. Now, what I mean by that is if I was to draw a line on his butt address and take it to the top, his butt actually dissects that line a little bit when he gets to the top. Now, what that does is it helps him create depth to the hand path and keep his hands deeper which gives him a lot more chance to get the club a little bit behind him from here at the top his elbow gets in front of his seam line and his seam line obviously everyone's got seam line in their top now as soon as your elbow gets stuck behind your seam line you're going to have a few troubles and you're going to have to early extend and do something to get the club back in front of you to have half a chance so you can see here just during transition as i play it down that right elbow there his seam line's kind of about there on his shirt and his right elbow's there and in front of it now, going on from that, at this position, um, his hands and his club drop below the shoulder plane, which is obviously a sign of the club shallowing. And his left butt cheek actually gets deeper, which shows he's moving more into flexion in the downswing. OK, so from here, it's also important to note that Tiger's trail arm is below his lead arm. This is a P5, which is where the lead arm is parallel to the ground. So his elbow, like if I was to draw a straight line under his elbow, his right elbow is below the left. Now, if you go to the majority, the overwhelming majority of ball strikers in the world, the best ball strikers have that trail elbow below where that lead elbow is and where that lead arm is, okay? Um, so going through now, you can see when he gets to like, P5.5, let's call it, rather than P6. We're kind of stuck in between here. Mm -hmm. um, you can see that his hands are very much out over his foot line, over his yeah. toe line. And it's what people would actually historically call a steep shaft. Okay. And that's, that's always how Tiger's moved. And that's why you'll see through impact, he does a lot of good stuff that actually make him obviously great. So being steep at P5, he adds a lot of right side bend, which is where your body just tilts away from the target this way and your spine angle tilts away. Now, what that does is it, it, it shallows the club out and it gets the club to drop under the plane a little bit, so it gives him a lot more chance. Now, what he has to do from there, you'll see, is if I was to just quickly whiz it back to impact and draw where his hands are at address and his hand line, okay? When you get to impact, you'll see that his handle will actually be higher than it was at address and his handle will raise. Now, that is a way of him recovering that steeper shaft at five and a half, at like P5.5. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that 
to do that, he'll have a really, really steep shoulder plane, which I've just drew that line there, which has kind of created that steeper shoulder plane. And that lead um, shoulder will rise up excessively in order to get up okay. and out of the way. Yeah. Okay. And it elevates and the upper body doesn't rotate a ton through the ball. He's very much, if you were to draw a line here and say, okay, his chest is pointing in this direction. Okay. His hips are more this direction there. And his knees are starting to rotate out to this direction. So when you see people and they say they like to match all those things up, it's a case of, if Tiger didn't do these things, he would be Tiger of hitting it off the planet again. Yeah. So he's worked hard to add a lot of depth to his swing to give him more of a chance. Mm -hmm. You'll see there's a video of Tiger. He's wearing a red jumper on Sunday. I think it was at, might have been at Tory. And um, he's, he's rehearsing a drill where he's really getting his hands like super deep in the takeaway. Um, if we can get that video up, I'll hopefully send it over to Joe. And I'll, yeah, and we'll, we'll I'll try and link that up. Yeah, we'll try and link that up. Um, it's it's something that he's worked hard to do, and that's that hip drill where you, you'll see it in this video that we put in a minute. But again, he's worked hard to add that depth so that then it gives him a lot more chance going through the ball. Okay, Because a lot of these things, such as the elevate and lead shoulder, the shut chest, the higher raised handle impact, okay, is evident of all those things, is evident of that steep shaft. So that's why he's trying to get a little bit more hand path depth. To me, is what I see it as because, you know, he's he's got to do these things in order to be functional. That's what matches up in his golf swing. A steep shaft at five and a half leads to slightly elevated shoulder at impact, just post impact, in order to give himself a chance because he's showing that he's shallowing it. Okay. So the steeper that a golfer is, your body would typically stay closed and you'll see more lead side elevation and you'll see lots of tilts. Um, not absolute. That's not what happens all the time because you might see somebody that comes way over the top and that's, they're obviously not matching that up well. Okay, that's not their matchup. So he matches the steep shaft with the appropriate amount of upper body tilt to keep his impact dynamics functional. So if he didn't do that, he would definitely struggle. Okay, Absolutely. so if we're going to talk about if we're going to talk about how a player like Tiger would struggle, it's when this matchup falls out of line. Mm -hmm. Okay, and where if this shoulder was to try and stay open and he was to shallow the club, he'd be in a whole world of pain. Okay. Yeah. So that's to me that's how I see Tiger. That's that's Tiger's. It's an interesting view that as well. I mean, in terms of let's say for example, Tiger Woods tomorrow turned up at M Moore and says, Alex. Right, I want a lesson. You've got to fix me. I probably <laughs> faint, to be honest with you. <laughs> is there is there anything <laughs> is there anything you would you would do? Um, I'd get him going along the path that he's going along. I'd make sure that he gets his hands deeper to the top and lets his hips move a bit. Because historically, you've seen Tiger under Butch and Butch Two Point Oh when the instruction back in those days was keep your hips very still. Mm -hmm. and restrict your hips and turn to the top. Whereas my method of instruction, the way I teach and the way that new instruction is not even new instruction is I call it new school is the old, old school type of thing. Yeah. So, you know, you look at Sneed and you look at Nicholas and the amount of hip turn they've got in the backswing, there's no restrictions. And that's Tiger's always been along the line of having restriction in his hips and his, his lower body and not moving very well. And, that's inevitably what I would I'd be like. We need to just make sure your hips are moving and make sure your hands get deep. If, if, if we do that, then everything else falls in line. I mean, you're not going to touch the magician that he is. You're going to, you're more likely going to make sure that's in check and be more of a, more of a performance specialist, which is why Foley was so good with him because Foley had turned around to him and say, well, you're not doing X from a uphill out of a, bit of rough to a 40 yard back pin you're shocking so let's go and do that you know yeah. and that and things like that and honing in a person's skills and skill set is um is what you know is what what we could do to improve a player more so than what we can to technically get them better